So my great plan at the beginning of the year of giving myself a dollar to spend on a new book every time I read a book from my shelves has kind of gone out the window. I have lost the motivation to keep track and I have a massive haul for you today. Hi friends, I'm Krista, you're watching Books and Jams, thanks for stopping by my channel. And let's just jump right in because I have almost 30 books to show you today. Or maybe it is 30, I don't know, it's a lot. But July was my birthday. So I had a couple gift cards that I used and was sent a few things from publishers and as well as a package from a dear subscriber. And I returned some books from my unhaul that didn't sell in my yard sale to a secondhand store and got some books with credit there. And then there was a library sale at the beginning of the month. So without further ado, here they are. I have from Bethany House blogger friends, A Daring Adventure by Elizabeth Camden. This book is about an, a scientist, a biochemist in the early 1900s named Rosalind. She is working on delivering clean water to people and figuring out how to minimize the effects of waterborne illnesses or diseases. She just has to convince everybody about this technology that she's working on. And we also meet Nick, who is the commissioner of water, commissioner of water in New York City. And he comes like butts heads with Rosalind in, of course, there's gonna be a little bit of a romance. This is a Christian historical fiction and it sounds really good. I have another YA sort of fairy tale retelling by Melanie Dickerson. I love her fairy tale retellings. This is also a Christian fiction that was sent to me by the Fiction Guild by Thomas Nelson. And this one is about Aladdin. So uh, a retelling of Aladdin. Very excited to have this one. What Blooms from Dust by James Markert. Markert, beautiful cover. This is sort of historical fiction. Sounds like it also may have some magical realism. It's set during the Dust Bowl time in America, which I can't remember the dates of that right now. But it's about this man, Jeremiah, who was about to be in the electric chair and somehow Either he's set free or he escapes, returns to his homeland or his hometown and just has to face people that he knew before he was imprisoned. It is a story of finding hope in the midst of darkness and discovering the beauty of unexpected kindness. I love unexpected kindness. <laughs> the Solace of Water by Elizabeth Byler Younts is the third one that the Fiction Guild sent to me this month. All I need to know about this is this tagline on the back. It says, in a time of grief and heartache, an unlikely friendship provides strength and solace. I really love books that deal with grief in some way and also friendship. Those are definitely two buzzwords of themes in books that I really love to read about. So I'm excited to look more into this one. With a gift card that I received for my birthday, I actually went to Barnes and Noble and paid full price. Well, I didn't pay because it was a gift card, but I got two books at full price, which is so rare in my world. <laughs> but I had just listened to The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron on audiobook through Hoopla, through my library. And it's definitely a book that I would like to refer back to or read through bits and pieces again. I think this book is a wonderful introduction to the Enneagram. It's sort of a personality framework, but it's so much deeper than that. And this book really gives a wonderful overview of each of the nine numbers. The Enneagram is something you've kind of heard about and you're interested in learning more about. This one is definitely a good place to start, I would say. And then I also picked up another Enneagram book, The Sacred Enneagram, Finding Your Unique Path to Spiritual Growth by Christopher L. Hertz. This is just another look at the Enneagram from a faith-based perspective that I'm really looking forward to reading. Since we're on birthday stuff, I ordered a little birthday present for myself from the book depository. I remember what two of them are, but the third one I can't remember. So I'm kind of excited to open these. I was waiting to do my July haul until these arrived because you know, sometimes book depository takes a little while. Oh good, this is the one I couldn't remember. I got the Story Girl by L.M. Montgomery. Eventually I would like to get all of the Anne in these editions. I will always keep the mass market paperback copies that I have because those are the ones I first read when I first got them, but I love this. These editions are published by Tundra and I really love how beautiful they are. I had never heard of the Story Girl. Anne of Green Gables is one of my favorite books of ever. <laughs> from my childhood and I've reread it a couple different times and I absolutely love it and recently I also read uh, The Blue Castle by Ella Montgomery. 
I also am very interested in the Emily books, but I don't own them yet. I just really want to read more from Ella Montgomery. And so when I saw this one on Book Depository, I thought this would be a fun one to go with. So this one is about Sarah Stanley, who is 14, and she can weave tales that are impossible to resist. In the charming town of Carlisle, children and grown-ups alike flock from miles around to hear her spellbinding tales. When Bev King and his younger brother Felix arrive for the summer, they too are captivated by the story girl, whether she's leading them on exciting misadventures or narrating timeless stories from the scary tale of the family ghost to the fanciful how kissing was discovered to the bittersweet the blue chest of Rachel Ward. The story girl has her audience hanging on every word. I think that sounds lovely. Anne was a very imaginative person as well. So this Sarah Stanley sounds like she is going to have some of that wonderful Anne imagination. Sort of sounds like it. it's going to kind of be like short stories. We shall see, but I'm really excited to have more Ella Montgomery in my life. All right, the next two, I know what they are, and they complete a series that I have been collecting. Ah, I'm so excited. So I have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen and... Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I am so thrilled. Sorry if I moved, but I had to get up <laughs> so that I could show you the whole, the whole set. Now I have all six of them and I'm so excited. They're very pretty. Mansfield Park has the persuasion cover on its end pages and the quote on the back says, a large income is the best recipe for happiness I ever heard of. <laughs> So excited. And then Northanger Abbey has the Emma cover. Here's the Emma cover on the inside. I love how they all tie together. And the quote on Northanger Abbey says, no one would have supposed her born to be a heroine and heroine. That sounds awkward to say, but that's correct. Yay, so I'm so excited that I now have the complete set. This makes me very happy. All six of them. One more time, just for beauty's sake. They're falling over. Goodness gracious. Okay, moving on. A lovely subscriber sent me a little gift for my birthday. She made these beautiful like ribbon, braided ribbon bookmarks. She sent me three of them. I think they're gorgeous and I really love them. They're flat which is nice so they um, will lie nicely in books. I'm so excited. And she also, this was a surprise because I knew she was sending me a card, but she sent this book. This is one of my favorite little golden books from when I was a child. I just love it. The Monster at the End of the Book starring lovable furry old Grover. Hello everybody. And Grover kind of speaks to the reader. I always thought it was such a fun book, like here at the, in the cover page. Well, this is a very dull page. What is on the next page? And each time, oh, I just noticed there's another bookmark. A person's a person, no matter how small. From Horton, here's a who. Ah, what a surprise. I love those little magnet bookmarks. What did that say? On the first page, what did that say? Did they say there will be a monster at the end of this book? <gasps> it did? Oh, I am so scared of monsters. So throughout the book, Grover tries to convince you not to turn another page. <laughs> it's a very cute story. I thought that was very sweet. Thank you so much, Terry, for sending that to me. I found a book in a little free library this month. I was inspired by Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library. They did a book list Thursday where they went to a number of different little free libraries in their towns. So I went to one that's near one of the places where I work and I found Fierce Kingdom by Jen Phillips. I have heard mixed things about this. I believe this takes place all in one day or in one evening about a mom and her young son who are about to leave a zoo when they see something that causes them to run back into the zoo and hide. So I think this discusses motherhood and also there's that thrillery mystery aspect of what's going on. Yeah, I've heard mixed things about it. I'm not sure I'm gonna love it, but it is in perfect condition. So I'll give it a chance and if I don't like it, I'll turn it in for new books at my used bookstore, which is where I got this next deck of books. And the good thing about this pile is that I have read three of these six books and I didn't pay anything for them because I traded in books that I was unhauling. One of my favorite books from last year is Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. I had listened to this through my library on Hoopla. Absolutely loved it. And so I was thrilled when I found this like beautiful condition copy of it. During middle grade March, I read The Penderwicks by Jean Birdsall, and I had borrowed it from the library. I think it's a very 
cute story in the midst of all the amazing books that I read in the month of March. I feel like this kind of got lost in the mix a little bit, but I did really enjoy it and would be very interested in reading the others in this series. I picked up a Newbery book that I wanted to read during middle grade March and I didn't get around to, Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I've heard wonderful things about this one. I grabbed a paperback copy of Beartown because I prefer paperbacks. I do have a hard copy of this. At some point very soon, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway on Instagram because I recently hit 1,000 followers on there. So soon I'll be doing a giveaway. I will just include the hard copy of Beartown in my giveaway on Instagram. I love Susan Meisner. I've read The Shape of Mercy by her. I also have a couple others of hers and now I have A Bridge Across the Ocean. This is set in 1946, so just after World War II. And it's about a German ballerina who joins a ship of war brides going to America to be reunited with their American soldier husbands. So it sounds sort of like Ship of Brides by Jojo Moyes, which happens from Australia to England. So this one happens from England to America. Kind of interesting. I loved Ship of Brides. I'm sure I will enjoy this one. And then I also have already read The Rose Garden by Susanna Kearsley. I had borrowed that from the library as well. So I'm very excited to have a copy of this for myself. I love Susanna Kearsley. She writes historical fiction with often a little bit of, um, what would you call it, magical realism or paranormal in a sense. Two timelines, romance, I love it. So I really did enjoy this one very much and I'm excited to own it. The next stack are ones that I did purchase at the library book sale. I believe these were about 50 cents a piece, except for the one hardcover, which was $2. So I didn't spend too much money on these either. And most of them I don't know very much about. I'm running a little bit late, so I need to go through these pretty quickly. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, I believe is a historical fiction set in Japan. Kind of a family saga as well. Just about six months ago or so, a lot of people were talking about this book. So I was thrilled when I found it for just 50 cents. I picked up quite a few Christian fiction. So I have Love Finds You in Camelot, Tennessee. These are good like palate cleanser, rom Christian romance. Like Flowers in Bloom by Siri Mitchell. Love Comes Calling by Siri Mitchell. That's it for the Christian fiction. I picked up Ostensibly Ordinary, which is another Austin inspired book. I didn't need to know much more about it. I just don't have this one yet. I found The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. I know this was just recently made into a movie, Netflix or something. So before I see that, I wanted to give it a read. This is a YA dystopian, I believe. Honestly, I don't know. I like this copy of uh, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. I have two books here by Elizabeth Strout. I read Olive Kittredge by her. And while I loved her writing, I thought her writing was beautiful and so intricate and well done, I was just depressed by all by Olive Kittredge. I found it to be so sad. So I'm hoping these are not quite as sad, but I picked up uh, My Name is Lucy Barton and Abide With Me. So I don't know anything really about those, but for a dollar for both of them, I thought I would give it a try. A number of people read this last winter, The Snow Child by A.O. and Ivy, which is I believe about this couple who builds a snowman and in the morning the snowman is gone and there's a child in the woods. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one, if I'm going to like it or not. I've gone back and forth so many times, but I got picked up Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. This, I believe, won a man booker. It won some prize. It's about um, ghosts in a graveyard and Lincoln and his son. <laughs> I'm not sure this is gonna be my cup of tea, but it's worth a try for two bucks. And finally, on a library sale shelf, I found Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluis, which is another YA fantasy that I don't really know much about, but I've seen a lot here on BookTube. You'd think that after two years, I would stop just getting things that I've just heard about. <laughs> and I usually do pretty good, but I do have a number of ones this time around that I don't know that much about. But anyways, there is my haul. I'm not going to try to hold them up. I'll just hold these up at the end <laughs> one more time because they're so pretty. Anyways, oh. That is my haul. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these, if you can give me any more non-spoilery information about the ones I'm not that familiar with. I would love to chat with you down in the comments as always, and I will be talking to you very soon in another video. Bye.